just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run, afraid of love I'm keeping God at bay. Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun. I am just a little runaway. Hi everybody, it's Calico and this is another exciting episode of Beyond the Body. <laughs> um, today's kind of a, a, a different kind of program. I get so many questions through Facebook Messenger and I invite you, if you have questions, please send me a message. I'm more than happy to respond. Um, but I thought I'd share some of them with you today because um, again, it's one mind, one question, one a solution and uh, so that seems to be the theme of Beyond the Body and uh, this is just another version of it by people sending in questions so I'll read the question and then I'll give you the answer on air so the first question we have today is hi Calico I love your video you posted earlier I have no idea which video it was it was one of the Beyond the Bodies I am interested in knowing if you use the principles in A Course in Miracles to help you heal from cancer. I ask this because I'm dealing with a significant health issue and would like to know more about working with health in the context of A Course in Miracles. Thanks for any ideas you may have that you think would be helpful. Well, here's the deal. I had the significant advantage of the medical world gave up on me and I was in hospice. So really, the only thing I do right now is A Course in Miracles. And it's not what you think. So the focus is not on the body. It's not on the form. A Course in Miracles is healing the mind. And what the body does at some point is irrelevant. It will either get better or it won't get better, but that's not my focus. My focus is really, I mean, the gold standard for me is, am I happy? And um, I've worked with actually some people that had death fear issues coming up for them. And I, I remember telling them, it's like, well, you have two choices. You can die in fear, or you can die in joy. And this is where I kind of use the principles of A Course in Miracles to be joyous for no apparent reason. And the more I clear my mind, I, the more I accept the atonement for all those judgmental thoughts that go on in our minds, I get happier and happier. And that's really all I'm concerned with at this point. I would, be ne I would never say I'm healed. That's um, kind of a misnomer. I, I almost say that most of my friends that have been quote unquote healed from ca cancer, they call it being in remission. They're some of the most fearful people I know because then they have to go in every three months, six months, a year for their tests and they fall into deep depression over getting tested for something that they've been healed from. So all I can tell you is yes, I use, the, the, I use Jesus' words and I know that my mindset will just continue to be happier and happier by accepting the atonement on every judgmental thought I have. And the focus is really not on the body at all anymore. And um, that's such a relief, I must say. So um, if you're dealing with a significant health issue, <clears throat> I invite you to you know, explore livingmiracles.org and I'll put these links in um, this particular program. David has tons of videos and speakers that you can listen to and learn how to live the principles of A Course in Miracles because he's uncompromising. Um, he will never tell you to you know, look to your body. It really is what is, how are you feeling? That's access to your mind at any given moment. And it's not so much, although, and I just need to say this because Spiri is one thing that I push heavily. Spiri is your personal spiritual assistant and I'll put that link in here too. 
it allows you to take how are you feeling and I've used all the symptoms that my apparent body has gone through headache nausea aches pains whatever and I've taken those to Spiri to see differently so I can see it's not about the body it's not about the symptoms that are occurring in form it's usually there's some judgmental thought coming up of not trusting myself not trusting another wanting to be right Mm, that's a big one for me um, you know just distrust of any of my brothers um, there's so many different aspects of this that come up and the healing is all in mind so I invite you to check out livingmiracles.org and you know start listening to a lot of the speakers and the YouTubes that we have available through that that website and uh, you know, if you if you feel like connecting with us for a devotional stay, we have silent retreats coming up. We have all kinds of opportunities to link into this organization. So I invite you to do so. And you're more than welcome to message me again with specific questions as well. So let's go on to our next question. <laughs> Hi, Calico. I am very depressed. I am packing up my home and moving to be near my son. Is it wise to take antidepressants? <laughs> um, God bless you. Uh, you know, even though I was a doctor in a former lifetime in this body, um, <clears throat> that's a decision for you to make, you and your doctor to make. I would never, ever address anything about diet, exercise, pills to take or not to take. That really is for you to decide. What I can tell you is you're feeling depressed, obviously. Take that to Spiri. What is the depression about? Um, are, you, you know, are you facing authority issues that your son wants you to move in with him and you don't want to? I mean, there's something going on in mind, in your thought system, that's not landing in a peaceful place. And so all I can say is ego's got you by the throat and you're trying to decide whether to take antidepressants when I think there's a whole other area that you could be looking at with or without antidepressants because that's not the point. What you do does not matter. It's how are you thinking? How are you feeling as a result of your thinking? And um, so that's where I would put my focus right now. Again, take the antidepressants. If you think they help, fine. But that's not really the big issue. Whether you take them or not, I want you to really look at what are your, what's your thinking? What's disturbing to you that requires you to even think that you might need antidepressants? Um, because our, our true nature is peace and joy. And when we're not in the peace and joy, we look outside to fix something outside of ourselves. And this is where, <clears throat> again, I can probably use the same links for the last question. You know, check out a lot of David's talks. He talks about, we have lots of YouTubes and Spreakers specifically on depression. So I would say, in addition to taking or not taking your pills, check out the YouTubes and Spreakers and I'll make sure those links show up here. And bless you. Um, I've, I've been there and I know depression and I and that's what eventually got me into community um, along with a whole host of other symptoms I was experiencing so um, I join you in the joy and the love that you are you're not alone and you're completely innocent and uh, just hold on to those words if you can't hold on to anything else okay um, Oh, this is one of my favorite questions. Hi, Calico. My mother has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. She has many symptoms, and I keep mirroring her symptoms often before she even tells me hers. I'm feeling them. Please help. It is so difficult to be around her. Hmm. You know, this is for anybody that knows anybody that's sick. Um, Oh boy, there's some major pitfalls in being around someone that thinks they're sick. And this is just not to go along. And the first thing I would say, and I learned this from my mother, 
Do not ask them, how are you feeling? Because it's going to open up this can of worms and they're going to tell you, well, my feet hurt, my head hurts, my ankles are swollen. You know, it'll, it'll just be a litany of symptoms. Instead, I say play an experiment with them. Do, do some experiments. And it's like when you first see them, it's, would you like to go out for a walk? Or if they're in a wheelchair, how about if I roll you out into the park? You know, or would you like to go get something to eat? Or maybe we could just sit here and listen to some music. It's really set up a whole different altar from which you can join. And, you know, after being in hospice, and I just need to say this, you know, they were all very well intentioned, my nurses and doctors and support staff. The problem is every time they'd come in, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? And it was like at some point I didn't want to answer. And I didn't. And finally I set up because I was really moving more into A Course in Miracles. I set up this whole system of, okay, this is the new game we're going to play as hospice patient. I said, I don't want to know anything. I don't want to have you ask me how I'm feeling. And you're going to take, you know, numbers and pierce me and blood and you do whatever you need to, but don't tell me about it. So they'd be putting on blood pressure cups, drawing blood, and I didn't care. We would be talking at that point, we were talking about God and what they loved about their lives and what I loved about my life. <clears throat> so I switched the whole conversation from the focus on the symptoms to the focus on the solution, which is what would make us happiest? So in the case of your mother, and I get you're taking on her symptoms, I get that, that's, that's one mind. So instead, start setting up new scenarios. Um, I know my mother and I would just sit quietly um, in a room together for hours on end. I mean, I called it meditating. I'm not sure what my mother called it, but she was very happy and content just to be in the same room with me and we would <clears throat> share quiet moments. But you can, you know, there's a thousand and one different things that you can do. Um, you know, like I said, go out for a walk, go get a meal, listen to music. Um, there's a lot of different scenarios that you can set up that take the focus off the symptoms, off the problem, and love each other. Just love each other, whatever way that shows up. So yeah, great question. And, and this is helpful for everybody. Um, again, as a chiropractor, I fell into uh, false empathy a lot. People would come to me with, <laughs> I remember when I was in clinic, when I first started in practice, I had to work with an empath, a psychic, because people would come into the clinic and they'd have low back pain, neck pain, headaches, whatever. And by the end of the day working with people, I would have low back pain, neck pain, headaches. I was basically taking on all their symptoms and um, the focus was on their symptoms. And, and one of the things I'm now getting is, you know, I don't share symptoms. Um, sometimes briefly I'll put them in on, on an altar with when I'm with somebody, but that's about the extent of it. And then I move on with my day and find where's the joy, where's the light, where's, where's the purpose, what am I doing? Holy Spirit, help me see all of this differently. So, yeah, bless you and your mother and, um, yeah, find the joy together. Find where you can laugh and giggle together. That, that would mean a whole lot more than, you know, asking her how she's feeling and just getting a litany of symptoms. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is, this is a long question, but um, I think it would be very helpful. Dearest Calico, words just can't express. I just watched your video on YouTube from August 15th about the body. I have been struggling with the course. It's just me and I don't feel I am doing it right, in quotes. It's just another thing in a succession of failures for me. I just feel like I'm floundering. That is just the way my life has been. I watch the videos and see other people who have it and I feel like I never will. I started it 20 years ago and stopped after three weeks because I felt I couldn't get it. I refused to quit but it is just lonely and difficult. I identified with so many things you said. 
I hate me. I never said that before, not even in my mind. Well, you probably did, <laughs> but it's true. I have never felt good enough, worthy. I am so ready. I am so ready though to just really come to this deep understanding that there is no body. We are not our bodies. There is nothing to judge, but ugh. Then I find myself in front of my mirror again, comparing myself to a hundred times to the skinny TV girls. Deep down inside, I want to love myself and others exactly how they are. I know you are busy. Thanks for just being there. I am so glad I saw you. Oh, God bless you. This one just, uh, this one just raises warm, loving thoughts in the cockles of my heart. Um, I have been a body shamer my entire life. Um, that was, I came into this world shaming my body and I thought I'd go out of this world shaming my body. Um, I was shaming my body when I was five pounds overweight. Now that I'm a hundred pounds overweight, I'm still shaming my body to the same extent I was with five pounds. So it's like the focus is not on form. The focus is on the mind. I, I, and maybe in this program, you know, some of these, principles will start sinking in. This is not the problem. <laughs> the mind, it's where our thoughts are and the thoughts are not in our brain. The brain functions the form. It breathes for us, beats our heart, it, it moves the limbs, it feels cold and hot. That's all the brain does. The mind is outside of our bodies. It's what is eternal and that's the mind judging the form. It's kind of like watching the movie on the screen and I'm sitting in the audience saying, oh, that screen is ridiculous. That's absurd. How can they do that? It's like, it's not, that's not the, the direction this should go. It's like, where am I not loving myself? Where am I judging others? I mean, I remember, oh my God, it's so funny how things land in my head. But I remember at one point in time, and I was in hospice at the time, and someone came to visit me and she had a green sweater on. And I remember thinking and catching it midstream. I was thinking the thought, ooh, that color green is not, not good for her. Who the hell cares? I mean, I, I, was, I was dumbstruck. It was like, why am I thinking this thought? How is this helpful? How is this gonna bring joy anywhere? I wasn't gonna repeat it to her because I just thought I'll keep it to myself. But when I had that moment, aha moment, it was like, I really realized how deep I had to dig and clean up my thinking for it was not being helpful. And from then, it really, I really stepped into my function as um, a miracle worker. I accepted the atonement on every one of these horrible thoughts. I mean, I remember there was a period, I, with Holy Spirit, I did it in prayer, because I've done this many times before, but not with Holy Spirit. I threw out my scale. Now, many times before, I've thrown out the scale. It's like, this is, these numbers, you know, up one, I'm miserable. Down one, I'm elated. So that was not the problem, throwing the scale out. But I did it with Holy Spirit. I said, I can't do this by myself. I don't know how to stop shaming the form. And so in prayer, Holy Spirit and I threw the, the scale out. And I never once went back. I haven't weighed myself. In fact, someone asked me, I was in with the doctor at one point, and he said, how much do you weigh? And I said, I have no idea, and I don't want to know. Why? It's not going to be helpful for me. At this point, I'm not in this form. This is not who I am. I am an eternal mind. And so it's really a process. You know, every time you look in the mirror and you find yourself going to your hips, or looking at your arms, or looking at your face, stop immediately. Holy Spirit, help me see this differently. That's my down and dirty prayer for everything. Holy Spirit, help me see this differently. And I'll keep repeating that until I take my mind, I'll remove myself from the mirror, I'll go, I'll you know do whatever is there to do. Eat something, take a walk, pray, take some silent time, listen to music, 
you know, whatever to take the focus off of what I'm seeing in the mirror, because those thoughts are just, they're just numbing, numbing to my heart. They are not helpful in any way, shape or form. And so I have to remove myself from the situation, which is me. I have to remove myself from the situation and say, no, we're not going there. Holy Spirit, help me see this differently. You know, I'll take the dog out for a walk and I'll be repeating the whole time as I'm walking, thinking, yeah, but I saw my hips and they're not good. Holy Spirit, help me see this differently. Holy Spirit, help me see this differently. With every breath, for however long it takes, pet the dog, kiss a baby. I mean, there are thousands of things we can do to reset our, our thinking. And it's just experiment. It's all one great experiment, but it has nothing to do with the body. And, uh, and yet I completely get it. Um, <laughs> I, I love my mother. I, we made a lot of peace towards the end of her life. And, uh, but I remember at age five, I knew her waist size. Now, I don't know why a child would know her mother's waist size at age five, but I did. And so that set up this whole way of thinking for myself of my, my beauty was established by a number on a waist. And it's like, I am so much greater than that. And I get that now. And I can't say this is easy, but I can say it's completely doable. Um, because I know watching all the skinny girls on TV and me just feeling worse and worse about myself, it's like, uh, we're beautiful, but we forgot. We separated from who we are as perfect, exactly as we show up, no matter what. And um, I join you in that, that prayer on a regular basis. And so join me in that one mind. We are perfect. We just forgot. And the other thing I just love to share with everybody, we're innocent. We have done nothing wrong. We're not alone. I'm with you. And we're so very loved beyond, beyond our wildest imagination. You know, billions of angels are kissing you right now. Those hips that you don't like. Billions of angels love your hips and they love your mind even more. So just, just join with me in mind and kind of take the focus off the form. And that's really the nature of all these questions is the focus is on the body. And this program is called Beyond the Body for a reason. It's like we've got to train our minds and David Hoffmeister and Living Miracles community, that's what we're doing in community. It's we're retraining our mind. David calls it unwinding the mind. But it's like we never learned how to think. We have focuses on things that are completely meaningless and not helpful to continuing our, our being joyous. So um, join me in the unwind of your mind. And I'll put a link in and a plug in for the 30 day program too. Oh, that, this program is powerful. And you'll get a daily email um, from David during the 30 day program. And then you j make sure you join the Facebook group. It's a private group. I am just, I'm, it's, it's a gold mine of healing. People are profoundly healing things that they never thought possible. And, uh, I'm so proud to be a part of it. And so I invite you to join that group once you've joined the 30 day, uh, experience and that link will be there. It's free and, uh, um, join us in the unwind, the giant unwind that appears to be going on right now. So for now, I just want to say, Thank you so much for all your messages and all your love. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. And I'm sending it back out to you. And, uh, you know, again, drop me a message if you have a question and I'll do these periodically on the show and we can all join in the learning, the great unwind together. So bye bye everybody until next week. Oh, have feel the love. That's what you can do. Feel the love. Bye bye. Was just a tiny mad idea at which the Son of God remembered not to laugh. We built an altar made of hate and fear. We let the ego live.